there were quite a few people missing on Friday, so I printed off these next two or three slides as a PDF. You can just get on and copy them into your notes. So definitely do that. Okay. Basically, what we did was look at all the different parent functions that we're going to study this year as separate units, starting with linear, which we've already done, and this first unit is our linear unit. So we're not going to do much more with it. And that includes this constant one. And then next unit is all about quadratics. So that's when we get into this a lot deeper. Um, for each one, we talked about domain and range, intercepts, and then intervals of increasing and decreasing. And on this first one, increasing, remember, is areas where the graph is going uphill or has a positive slope. Decreasing is the opposite. So like the linear function was always increasing and never decreasing. And this gave us a chance to practice interval notation and identify domain and range. Okay? So let's kind of simplify some things. So far, we've only had two that didn't have infinite range, which was the parabola. Range, remember, we read from bottom to top. And I kept saying the word like scan. So I'm scanning up, up, and I first hit the function at zero, and then ever after that. So it had a non-infinite range, meaning it started at zero instead of in negative infinity. Another one that was like that was uh, our absolute value function. It started at zero and went to infinity. Okay? <coughs> Similar here, um, in terms of the range, this was the square root function, started at zero and went to infinity. One thing you have to kind of get used to is this arrow doesn't necessarily look like it's always going up, but it is, it's just slow. So it will take a long time before it gets, like these values get really high, but it eventually does. Okay. So, also that one had a non-infinite domain as well. Uh, speaking of that, let's go back to this one. Domain left and right, read left to right. So that arrow kind of looks like it's going up and never will end up at negative infinity, but it does. Okay. Where does this graph start? In terms of x, where does it start? In terms of x. Negative. So it starts at negative infinity. Okay? It's sometimes students get confused and say, hey, I see that point. It starts at negative 3. But it doesn't, not with that arrow on there. We know it starts left of that at negative infinity. Same with the absolute value, starts at negative infinity, etc. Okay? Oh, here's where we left off. This was our exponential. Where does it start? X values, where does it start? <coughs> Negative infinity, right? <coughs> you see this arrow pointing forever left? That means if you're going to get on this function and start your hike, as we've used that analogy for intervals of increase, I'm getting on at negative infinity, which is just a con concept kind of idea. In terms of y value, where does it start? Almost to zero. Almost to zero. That was well said. It doesn't actually ever touch zero. So it doesn't, we can't include zero, but it does start there. So let me ask you. We're talking range right now. Bottom to top. So I first hit a value at close to zero, but not quite. How do you show that with an interval? Yeah, good job. Parentheses, zero, and then where does it go? Yeah, it'll keep going to infinity in the long run. All right. How about range for this one? Where does it start? X values from left to right, where does it start? <coughs> Starts at negative infinity, and then X value to the right, where does it go? Also infinity. This is one of those that looks really hard to see it. 
Because it looks like it's going straight up, like it will never get to infinity. But it will. Okay? It does. What does this stand for? <clears throat> X-intercept. Does it have one? No. Because it never crosses the x-axis. Not as a parent function. If we transform it and move it around, yes, but not as a parent function. Uh, what does this stand for? And what is it? One. In other words, if we plug two to the zero, it's one. What is five to the zero? It's one. What is 10,000 to the zero? One. What is 0.5 to the zero? One. What is shyly to the zero? Okay. Where is this increasing? On what interval is it increasing? Like if you're hiking this hike, starting all the way at the beginning at negative infinity, which technically isn't a beginning, but you know what I mean. Where are you hiking uphill? Yeah, always. Make sure that gets in a backpack or the box. Where is it decreasing? Never. Never. <clears throat> Good. Okay, logarithmic function. This one is... We'll study this as a joint unit with the exponential because they're inverse operations, like just the opposite. Uh, but this one is one you've probably never seen before. So we could either do log base 10 or log... Uh, F here. So f of x is, let's do natural log. So ln, that stands for natural log. Okay? Log is short for logarithmic or logarithm. Natural log. I wish I had written something else. Oh, well, we'll go with natural log. It's basically the same shape as log. <clears throat> okay, this one, in terms of, let's do a few of these numbers, just so you can get a feel for it. Uh, natural log, this one's hard to explain if you have had no exposure. Uh, basically, what power of a base number e gives you the number that we're looking for? So. I'm just going to give you some numbers since we're not quite there. And, like, for example, uh, this has the same uh, x. It has an x-intercept of 1 out of y. Anyway, not worried about that. Uh, so 1, 0, okay? And then I want you to write... Can I do this so it makes sense? Roughly, just put the approximate symbol, roughly 2.71. And you'll see what I mean by this down the road. And then anything before this, our graph is going to do this. So it's really sticking super close to the y-axis as we get closer to it, and then it kind of shoots up from there a little bit. Okay. So looking at the graph, I, this one, again, without getting into more detail than we need at this point, I can't explain too much more about it. But looking at the graph is enough to tell me the domain. So starting left to right, where does it look like this begins? Where does it, in terms of x values, so scanning, scanning, where do I first start hitting x values? Yeah. Can it be 0? No. So 0 to infinity. Okay, range. Remember, for range, we're scanning bottom to top. 
Where do we first start hitting x values going up? Good. Negative infinity to infinity. Okay. It does have an x-intercept. It's at 1, 0. Does it have a y-intercept? No. We call that, I, I said this word on Friday, when a, line, when a graph approaches a line like that that never touches it, it's called an asymptote. And so we say it approaches the y-axis asymptotically, which means it never crosses so no y-intercept. When is it increasing? When are you hiking uphill? Always. But always, in this case, starts at zero, not negative infinity. When is it decreasing? Never. Good. All right, one more. Rational function. This is the coolest graph, that little graph. The most simple form is 1 over x. We, the ones we'll work on, this is our rational functions unit, will look way more busy than just 1 over x, but they kind of graph similarly. Well, before we do all this, let's think about numbers that x can be, or can't be, actually. Let's think about that. What number can x not be? There's only one. Zero. Why? Can you divide by zero? No. Okay. So we're going to kind of split this up real into negative and positive. But at zero, this is undefined. So there's an issue with our graph at zero. What happens when you divide by zero? It doesn't work, right? No, not syntax. It just says cannot divide by zero or divide by zero error. Yeah. It's undefined, OK? But we can think about what happens as we get really close to zero on either side. So let's think of it this way. Don't, you don't need to write this down. Actually, do write it down. Start here. What happens when I divide 1 by 1? It's 1. So go ahead and put a point on 1, 1. OK, let's go out a little ways. Just, I think we have like 9 or 10 lines. What happens when you divide 1 by 10? 1 divided by 10. Right? 1 divided by x. So 1 divided by 10. Oh, sorry. 0.1. I thought you said that much. Okay, so that's really super close to the x-axis. Everybody good on that so far? What happens when I divide 1 by some teeny tiny number? Let's do four zeros. Like, how many little teeny parts are in a whole? Think of it this way. One whole pizza, how many crumbs are in a pizza? A whole bunch, right? A really whole bunch. Based on the number that I wrote, this is 10,000. So in other words, if I put in a tiny number, for x, I get a huge number out. So what does that look like on my graph? I'm like super close to the y-axis, but I'm spitting out an enormous number. So on here, where is that? Way, way up there, OK? So we're not going to stick a point there, but this graph is going to look like this. On that side, OK? Now let's go the other way real quick. What's negative 1 divided by, what's 1 divided by negative 1? 1 divided by negative 1. Negative 1. So we have 1 to the left and negative 1 down. Uh, what's negative 10 divided, 1 divided by negative 10? 
negative 0.1. Okay? So there's on the bottom side of the x-axis. And what if I divide by negative 0 0.00001? Well, what is 1 divided by a negative tiny number? A negative huge number, right? So negative 10,000. <coughs> so on this side, it looks like that. And we have no graph right on x equals 0, right on the y-axis, there's no graph. And why is that? What happens when you divide by 0? Yeah, it's undefined. So, tell me about the domain for this one. What numbers can... Let's say it this way. There's only one number x can't be, right? Which is zero. Otherwise, I'm fine all the way to negative and positive infinity. So how do we show all numbers ever except zero? Well, if we're using interval notation, it's going to look like this. Put a parenthesis on zero to say, nope, you're not going to be zero. So from all the way from the left to zero... And then we're going to draw this symbol that looks like a U without the tail. And it stands for union, which means we're going to join these two intervals together. Okay, how about the next interval? Here's what we've done. We've said all the way up to there. Now we've got to pick up here and go to the right. So what would the other side say? Yeah, zero to infinity. Good. Okay. We're going to leave it like that since we're practicing interval notation. I'll show you later on another way to write that. How about range? Do we have any limits on the range? Scanning bottom to top? There's no zero. Okay. Yeah, he's right. Trinity, what's up? Are you confused? No, I'm just having a moment. Oh. <laughs> so same thing, just no zero. Okay. All right, is there an x-intercept? Does this ever cross the x-axis? No. How about y? Does it ever cross the y-axis? No. Okay. The increasing, decreasing stuff is a little bit weird. Where is this decreasing? So we're writing this or hiking this function. Right? And then picking it up again. Yeah. So it's the same as the domain and range. And then it's never increasing. Okay. This, these kind of functions, as we get to them later on, the graphs have a base appearance like this, but we can add other things to them that look kind of cool. <clears throat> so, hopefully you like that. Guys, we're going to study all of these this year in separate units. Um, this will be a unit, rational, it's called rational functions. Uh, then, exponential log will be a unit, so there's two of them. The polynomial one, the one that we wrote as x cubed, that'll be one. Quadratic is next. And then, the roots and radical one. Roots and rational exponent is what that, is what that one's called. So that will be unique. So we typically cover six units. We might get to a probability unit at the end, we'll see, which has nothing to do with this at all. But here's what I want you to do with this piece. Number one, this is your study aid for domain range and intercepts and stuff, okay? So put this in the front of your notebook, and I want you to look at it often as a parent function guide.
So no piecewise functions, that's good. This packet will carry us through a practice of identifying key features. And so the way it works, the first, I don't know, like 10 pages or so, is just specific, let's identify these key features, like domain and range, etc. And then as we get, you don't need to flip there, I'll just show you real quick. As we get towards the end, this is where you'll need to be when we get to testing on this unit. Things like this. So here's a function. Uh, what are, like, what's f of 0? Okay. So plugging in function values. And then here, I want to get to that one. So this is towards the end. So function evaluation at a point, And then key features, all of that stuff. That's the goal of this packet over the next few days, okay? So let's start off quick, but easy. So this one, determine the domain for each number line below. So these should be quick, domain. I'm gonna give you a minute to do those three. Quick, quick. Open circle means what? All right, so if you want this little note, open circle, is parenthesis, closed circle, means bracket. So closed circle, think of it as touching the number. Open circle, think of it like a gate or a fence around the number. You can't get it. So this one would be negative infinity to 4 with a parenthesis on the 4 because it has that open circle. This one, negative infinity to negative 1 with a bracket. Remember, infinities always have a parenthesis, so those ones should be easy to remember. Okay, this one, open circle, so parenthesis 2 up to infinity, parenthesis on that as well. Good? Okay. Yeah. Guys, we're going to be seeing open circles as part of our piecewise functions. And stuff. Okay. Uh, let's do a couple of these mixed intervals. So just do the bottom three. Bottom three. You're, you're always welcome to do more, but just do those real quick. The bottom three. All right, there's the... If we make that change to positive 8, there's the 3. Any questions on that? Okay. So now we're going to start bringing that into more function types. Um, quick check. Out of this page, there are two of these that are not a function. Which two are they? Two and four, and why is that? Yep, they fail the vertical line test, which is two outputs for one input. Okay? Because you're packing up. So, for homework, please do pages three and four on the domain and range. And it says, find the domain and range for each graph. Not function. So do all of them is really what that means. 